Hey, what's going on guys? Root of the Null here, coming back at you with another Python tutorial. I'm gonna get idle started up, and then we can, uh, we can get to programming. Save your script as whatever you'd like. I'm gonna call mine file.python. Type in our shebang line here. Create a new class. Define our constructor with the DEF keyword along with the init keyword wrapped in two underscores on either end. Go down and create an if statement. And now we can create a new object. And then we should be set to go. Alright, so I'm going to create a list variable here, just like uh, just like we have in the last couple of videos. I'm going to call mine self.list and the value can be this is a list. And now we can print this out. We can print out uh, self.list and I'm going to concatenate on some, uh, some new line characters. Obviously you don't have to, but if we do do that we have to convert it into a string. So if we run this, we get this is a list and then we get those new line characters that we had been asking for. So now let's take a look at uh, today's function or the function that we're looking at in this video. It's called index. And now what index was would do anyway is it would uh it would return the first occurrence in the number of uh, of elements inside your array or your list and it would return the first occurrence of whatever you pass to it. So if we go ahead and print out uh, self dot list and we use our dot selector to run the index function what it will do is it will pass in is I'm sorry we can pass in is and it will return uh, one because one is the first index where it finds that value so because if we're starting counting from zero remember this is zero is is one a is two and uh, list is three so we actually have a length for this for this uh, for this list to be four because we have four elements, but is is going to be found at the first index. So let's run this, and we can see we found one. Now we can supply a start variable too because it's an optional parameter. We can supply, let's say, we wanted to start from the first position. And we still get one because we've started looking right there, and we can also uh, we can actually what if we started somewhere after this? If we uh, if we do this, we get a value or at least a value error because is is not in that list because if we start checking from uh, from 2 we have a and then list but is isn't in there so it's going to return to us an error is is not in this list so when we're creating the function uh, all by ourselves we can decide whether or not we re we want to return an error or we can actually just return 0 that we or like a negative 1 that we didn't find the thing so uh, let's give it a go Remember, before we jump into the action, though, we can supply an ending variable. If we wanted to start from 0 and end at 1, we could still get this because we're going from 0 to 1, except we're not going to count 1 because it's at the end. While it's while 0 is less than 1, uh, 0 is only going to be 0 if it's less than 1, so we have this, and what's not going to find is. So let's try and recreate this. So let's go define our own function. Define, I'm going to call mine index. Passing the self variable, we're going to need the array or the list that we're looking for. I'm going to just call it list, I suppose. Actually, if it's going to highlight it, we should call it array. And uh, then we're going to need the value that we're looking for. Then we're going to need start, which could be zero. And then end, which can be none. Now, the reason we're setting end to be none is because we're going to want to change it if they haven't supplied it. So we can test if end is still equal to none by the time we're running our function. What we can do is change it to end, which is going to be the length of the array that we're looking at. And now we can begin to loop. So we can do for i in range, because we're going to count through this. We're going to want to start from the start variable, obviously, and go until the end. And then inside of that code block, we can test if array i, so the current variable we're looking at is equal to value, or at least what we find, what we can do is we can return i. So remember, the return function will break out of anything that we're in. So we'll, we'll break out of this if statement, we'll break out of this for loop, and we'll break out of the function. And we'll just go ahead and return back to the, to the, uh, to the scope above us that, okay, we found it at position i. And now we should be set. But remember, if it doesn't find it, for now we can return negative 1 because we have not found it. So let's try this up in our constructor. If we print out self.index and we pass in our uh, self.list and we'll look for the is 
If we run this, we get 1, because remember, it's at position 1. If we go ahead and run this along with the original function that we had, we both get 1 in both cases. Now let's pass in, uh, maybe we can start from 2. We can start from 2 here, but remember, we're going to get an error. So we can't really work with this without commenting out the first one. If we start from 2, we get negative 1 in our function, but we should, I suppose, change this to the value error if you guys want to have, like, the real pristine recreation of the original function. So let's work with that in a little bit, but first we'll go back to uh, 0 and 1, and remember, it's not going to find anything anymore either because we're still checking this one, but if we went from 0 to maybe uh, 3, it's going to find is at that first position again. So now let's go back inside of our function and uh, see if we can set up that value error. Now the way that we would do, uh, that we would raise an error inside Python is called the, is at least you can initiate this with the raise keyword, R-A-I-S-E. And now we can raise the sort of error that we want. And in our case, it is a value error. And then we can pass in inside parentheses here what we want to be displayed. It looks like they were using is, so that value, and then is not in the list. So we can do this all by ourselves. We can do I. I'm sorry, not an I, but an, a quotation mark, and we can add on the value, and then we can add on the quotation mark again, and we can just say is not in list. So now, if we run, if we run this, oh, it looks like there's an error. We did not concatenate this on. I forgot my addition sign, sorry. And now we get the value error is is not in the list because we've started counting well, actually, that's the first function, but if we uh, if we comment that one out and we start from 2, it's going to give us that same output because it's not in the list. So we get this one up here, is not in list, and the same here, is not in list, inside of our own function. So we've kind of practically recreated the original function. Now, remember, you can pass in the end argument as well, and, you know, there's a lot we can do with this. We can help actually look for where we find something inside of our string inside of our list anyway, and we can obviously change the value that we're looking for and that sort of thing, and we could have this become a more versatile function, especially if we work around that error, uh, that error, um, handling and that sort of thing, because we can always have it return negative one if we don't find anything else. But before I, before I go, I want to show you guys an interesting little, um, commenting trick. If we have a quotation mark here, or at least a multi-line comment, and then we have a single line comment, and then we have more uh, if we end that multi-line comment and we add a line here, we can toggle a quote from this ending comment to run code below. And now if we wanted to use our return function, we could set this up in that same style. And then I'm going to copy and paste this make it easy, and then at the at least under that, we should set up those same 1, 2, 3, and then that one here. So now, if you actually look at the description here, if you toggle a quote from this ending comment to run the code below, what we can do is we can remove um, one comment from here, at least one quote, and now raise is commented out. But return is still running. If we just, uh, if we had it the other way around, we could just toggle this one and put this one back on, and now return is commented out, but raise will run. So we can quickly alternate between which function that we want to run, and everything stays easy. We could, uh, we could run that one, we could run this one, we could just cut this one out, and that sort of thing. So you can quickly decide which command, or at least which statement you would, you'd prefer to run, depending on whether you're, like, you're debugging your code, you're trying to troubleshoot a problem, or that sort of thing, and you have to alternate between one statement to be able to see what the output is going to be. But there you go, guys. <laughs> here's our, here's our function for today, and here's a little bit of a commenting trick. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next tutorial.